Welcome to the new age. Welcome to the new age. Whoa, oh, 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 whoa, oh, 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 oh. I'm radioactive. I'm radioactive. That's right, today we're talking about radioactive decay. Hit the theme. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Kaminacha. I'm your host Fu, and with me as always is Shu. Shu know it. So Shu, most of this school year we focused on chemistry involving electrons. Yeah, and now we're going to focus on chemistry involving the nucleus. So let's get started. Radioactive decay, a lesson from the nuclear chemistry unit, has to do with the nucleus. Get it? A breakdown of radioactive decay. Introduction. In 1896, French chemist Antoine Becquerel accidentally discovered that uranium emits invisible rays. Marie and Pierre Curie were his students and they showed that film could be fogged or exposed by the rays given off by uranium ore. This radiation was a result of radioactive decay, aka radioactivity. What is it? The spontaneous breakdown of an atom's nucleus. In a chemical reaction, the nucleus never changes only electrons are transferred or shared. In a nuclear reaction, the nucleus always changes, thus changing the identity of the atom. Why does it occur? Neutrons help reduce proton repulsion in the nucleus by separating the protons. A nucleus may be stable when its neutron to proton ratio is slightly greater than one. A nucleus may be unstable when its neutron to proton ratio is too large or too small. It will then spontaneously break down until it attains a more stable neutron to proton ratio. The belt of stability represents a neutron to proton ratio which is stable, resulting in nuclei that do not decay. Anything outside of the belt of stability has a neutron to proton ratio which is unstable, resulting in nuclei that do decay. All right, if you take a look at the graph we have on the side here, we have number of neutrons in the nucleus on the y-axis, and we have number of protons on the x-axis. If you take a look at that faded red line with all those red dots in it, that is our belt of stability. Okay, I want to draw your attention, though, for a second to the solid red line. This is representative of a one-to-one -one neutron to proton ratio. So you can see for lighter elements closer to the origin of this graph, the belt of stability kind of follows that one-to-one -one ratio. But as we get to heavier and heavier nuclei, that belt of stability kind of veers away from that solid red line, meaning we don't have a one-to-one -one ratio. We actually have more neutrons for heavier elements to make them stable. You try number one. Using the graph from the previous slide, determine if the following nuclei are stable or unstable. A, a nucleus with 40 protons and 40 neutrons. Why? B, cesium-133. Here's a little hint. 133 is the mass number of CS. Again, explain why. What does it result in? The decay process results in the release of energy and particles. A new element is also formed as the nucleus breaks down and changes its composition. Because the nucleus changes, the identity of the element also changes. This is why a new element can be formed in a nuclear reaction, but not in a chemical reaction. Which elements are always radioactive? Technetium, atomic number 43, polonium, atomic number 84, and any element with a higher atomic number than polonium. Which elements are sometimes radioactive? Most elements are not radioactive and do not decay. Still, many elements have rare isotopes that are radioactive and thus called radioisotopes. Many times these radioisotopes are high neutron isotopes. For example, carbon-12 is not radioactive, but carbon-14 is radioactive. What is natural transmutation? The spontaneous changing from one element to another. This is the same thing as radioactive decay, but with a different focus. Natural means that it happens in nature without human intervention. The word transmutation specifically describes the changing of one element into a new element. 
This is exactly what happens during radioactive decay, the formation of a new element. Which factors do not affect radioactive decay? Unlike with chemical reactions, temperature, pressure, concentration, surface area, and catalyst do not affect the decay rate. The decay is determined only by the stability of the specific nucleus and is thus not affected by outside forces. Therein lies one of the problems of radioactivity. It can't be sped up or slowed down. Types of radioactive decay. Let's start with alpha decay. An alpha particle can be released from the nucleus as it decays. An alpha particle is the same thing as a helium nucleus and has a mass of 4 and a charge of plus 2. Alpha particles are very large and move very slowly. They have a low penetrating power, meaning that they can't pass through matter easily. They can be stopped by paper. They can, however, cause surrounding matter to ionize, so they have a high ionizing ability. Because alpha particles have a low penetrating power, they are not very dangerous from external exposure. Because alpha particles have a high ionizing ability, they are more dangerous from internal exposure, inhaling or ingesting. For example, radon gas produces alpha particles. Radon is breathed in at low levels every day, but when exposure is too high, this can lead to lung cancer. Beta decay. A beta particle can be released from the nucleus as it decays. A beta particle is the same thing as an electron and has a mass of zero and a charge of negative one. Beta particles are formed in the nucleus when a neutron breaks down into an extra proton, which remains in the nucleus, and an electron, which is given off. Beta particles are of medium size and move at a medium speed. They have a medium penetrating power and can be stopped by something thicker than paper, such as metal foil. They can cause surrounding matter to ionize, so they have a medium ionizing ability. Because beta particles have a medium penetrating power, they can, in extreme cases, cause burns to the skin, like a sunburn. Because beta particles have a medium ionizing ability, they are still dangerous from internal exposure through inhaling or ingesting. Gamma radiation. Unlike alpha and beta particles, gamma radiation is not a particle released from the nucleus as it decays. Instead, it's a form of electromagnetic radiation that has a mass of zero and a charge of zero. Gamma radiation moves at the speed of light, so it is very fast. Gamma radiation has a very high penetrating power and can only be stopped by lead or concrete. It causes very little surrounding matter to ionize, so it has a low ionizing ability. Almost all radioactive decay modes are accompanied by a release of gamma radiation. Because gamma radiation has a high penetrating power, it can easily pass through your body, damaging your tissue as a result. This is the cause of radiation sickness associated with radioactive waste spills or atomic bombs. So for those of you who have been confused by what penetrating power is so far, penetrating power is just the ability to go through a medium. That's all we're talking about here. So as you can see in the animation, alpha particles, as they travel, they are stopped by paper. Going down to the blue line, we have beta particles. Now they'll go through the paper, but they're stopped by foil such as aluminum. Or aluminum if you prefer. And traveling down the final one, we have gamma radiation, the green line there that will go through both paper and aluminum, but can be stopped by things like lead or concrete. This image shows how the different forms of radiation behave in the presence of an electric field. Now remember, opposites attract. Beta particles, which are negative, are going to attract to the positive electric field. On the other hand, alpha particles, which are positive, are going to attract to the negatively charged electric field. In gamma rays, they have no charge, so they are not affected at all by an electric field. This table represents a good summary, and it's a good study guide for all the different properties of the different types of radiation. Finally, we have positron decay. A positron particle can be released from the nucleus as it decays. A positron is the same thing as a positively charged electron. A positron has a mass of zero and a charge of plus one. A positron forms when a proton breaks down into an extra neutron, which remains in the nucleus, and a positron, which is given off. All symbols and notations for the four decay types are included on table O. Table O represents symbols used in nuclear chemistry. 
Notice that the notation and symbol for both neutrons and protons are included. Radioactive decay equations. Let's talk about characteristics. A radioactive decay equation should always have one reactant, the element decaying, a particle emitted as a product based on the type of decay, and a new element created as a product. If you take a look at the decay equation below, we have potassium on the left, that's our reactant. It is decaying, giving off a positron, we see that particle, and then that nucleus becomes an argon atom, a new element. Given a radioisotope, also known as a nuclide, you can look on table N to find out its decay mode. We will discuss half-life later in this unit. Rules for writing. You will be given a radioisotope. Since it decays on its own, write it down as the only reactant. Note, you may have to determine the atomic number off of the periodic table. Add an arrow after the radioisotope. Using table N, determine the decay mode. Now using table O, determine the full notation of the emitted decay particle. Write this notation for the particle to the right of the arrow as a product. The mass, top numbers, must be equal on both sides. Determine the top number of the new element. The nuclear charge, bottom numbers, must be equal on both sides. Determine the bottom number of the new element. Using the bottom number, same as the atomic number, and your periodic table, write the symbol of the new element. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have an example here for you. Shoot, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, we're gonna write the equation for the decay of uranium-238. So first things first, we're gonna write down the proper notation for the isotope uranium-238. All right, so uranium is U, and the 238 here should represent the mass, so that goes up top. Very good. Um, I think I need a lower number, but they don't give it to me. You do. As it says in our rules for writing these equations, you got to look up that atomic number sometimes since they're not always going to give it to you. But that's easy. That's on our periodic table. So what's the atomic number of uranium? Uh, it's 92. Very good. Our second step in our rules is to add an arrow after this radioisotope. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to use table N. We've put it here on this slide here. We're going to look up the decay mode of this particular isotope. So let's look up uranium-238. All right, so it looks like there's three different uranium nuclides here, but I wanna make sure it's uranium-238, just to be safe. And I'm looking at the decay mode, it's alpha decay. All right, so now that we've done that, we're now we're gonna shift over to table O and determine the full notation for that alpha particle. All right, yeah, table O has a lot on it. It's very helpful. We've got alpha particle here for my notation. I could use either one of those. They both show the four and the two though. Um, I like the one with the AG, the helium, so I'm gonna write that one down here. Okay, so now what we have is a missing product, right? So the rules tell us that the top numbers on both sides, or the masses, have to be the same. So if we're applying that conservation of mass, what does the top number of our missing particle have to be? All right, so I've got 238 over here on the left of the arrow. And then over on the right, I've only got four. So I want 238 on the right side so that they're equal. So I would need 234, because 234 plus four would add up to 238. Very good. Let's apply that same rule to the nuclear charge or the atomic numbers on the bottom. All right, so I've got 92 for uranium on the left. I've got two over on the right side of the arrow. So I would need 90 here, because 90 plus 2 on the right would equal the 92 on the left. Very good. One last step to finalize this and figure out what it is. That bottom number, remind us what that is, that 90. Oh, the 90 there. Um, that's the atomic number of nuclear charge. Okay, so this is pretty simple. We can go to our periodic tables, we can look up element number 90, and we can get the symbol right from oh, there. Okay, so element 90 is TH, thorium. Very good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have another example. Shu, are you still ready? I'm still ready. All right, we're gonna write the decay equation for carbon-14 this time. I'm gonna let you take the reins, so what do we do first? Um, well, we gotta write down the carbon. Uh, that's gonna be on the left, and I know that it has a mass of 14 that goes up top. I also remember from the last problem, I need the atomic number, so looking up carbon's atomic number, I get six. Okay, what do we write next? 
uh, an arrow because it's decaying, it's breaking down on its own. What is it breaking down into and where do we go to find that? All right, so I've got to go to table N. I'm going to find carbon 14. It's got the beta with the negative. So I know it's beta decay and not positron decay. There. Very good. So I'm going to write that notation, but I want to get the notation correct. So I'm going to jump over to table O, beta. There's two different ways I can write it. I like the one with the E. So zero, negative one, E. All right, I think we're all ready to figure out all the stuff for our notation of our missing product. All right, so let's see. So I want the mass to be the same on both sides. I've got 14 on the left, I've got zero on the right. So I guess 14 has to go up top for our missing element. Good. And then I've got six on the left, I've got negative one on the right. It's kind of weird that it's a negative. Yeah, be careful here. We got to make sure that they're equal mathematically. So even though it's a negative, we still have to balance out to being a total of six. Okay, so I guess it'd have to be seven because seven minus one is equal to six. That's right. All right, so seven goes there. Okay, last step. Let's go to our periodic table and look up element number seven. All right, so element number seven is nitrogen, N. Very good. You try number two. Write an equation for the decay of calcium 37. Make sure to use reference tables N and O and your periodic tables. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode on radioactive decay. It's been emotional. Yeah, and now we're going to focus on chemistry that involves the nucleus. So let's get started. No. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't, we, I turned my I head. wasn't ready. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't. <laughs> We're new here. No, I am. You're fine. You're new here. So, <laughs> looking in the right. And why is it the cap? Did I say the <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> That's it, Chief. I think it, I think it is. John <laughs> Becquerel accidentally discovered that uranium emits a visit. <laughs> Sorry. How do you say it? It's not curry. Cur curry. Curry? Curry. Curry. Yeah. Not Curie, though. I'm like, I'm trying to make it sound French. Pierre Curie. Curie. <laughs> you want to say? <laughs> Marie and Pierre Curie. 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 This is going to be like Curium? corpuscles. 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 Curie. <laughs> Curie. 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 <laughs> Marie and Pierre Curie were his students. <laughs> I don't know how to... Uh... Look at this image of this blue dot. That's a beta particle. Stare at it and that for one minute and then look at a whiteboard and see what happens. It's You'll see a beta word. particle. <laughs> if you want to stick with behave. that... Behave. I like behave. Okay. Behave. Okay. Be oh, behave. <laughs> behave. Today's episode is brought to you by... Todd Lawson's Pet Petter. Never touch your pets again. Pats cats. Pets dogs. Rechargeable for hotel use. 6D flea pads included. 4 speed slash 4 hair lengths. Up to 85 ppm. Pats per minute. But don't take our word for it. Woof's Weekly says, unique. But we never off, but we zone to the brick of dawn. S-C-I-E-N-C-E -E -E in the hall, they call S-Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and uh. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and uh. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in chill to the next episode.